Spectre Console allows you to turn your C-Sharp console apps into visually appealing, informative applications. In this series of videos, we're learning how to take full advantage of this library in 10-minute chunks. The source code is available as a link in the description. In this lesson, we're going to create panels, which are simple callouts, or they can be many tables, depending on your need. If you like this series, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, as well as visit imtimcorey.com for more training resources. Let's get started. So let's start off with a very basic panel. Panel, let's we'll call it panel, equals new, and we'll pass in Tim Corey. And then we will do the ANSI console dot write. Remember again that write allows us to set the um, the irrenderable, which a panel is a renderable or irrenderable. So that's it. That's our panel. And if we run this now, we will see a very simple little box around Tim Corey. And that's it. And that can be all you have. And and that actually can be really helpful for calling something out or highlighting something and so on. But we can do better than that because there are other options with this panel. For instance, let's start looking at the panel features. So panel um, dot border and we'll say equals box border dot and we'll do the rounded again um, because that's, you know, it shows up differently. And then we can also um, look at the header, which we'll get into in a minute, and the padding. So panel dot padding. And here we can say new, and we have four options, just nothing, or we can say an initial size, or we can say, well, horizontal and vertical, or left, top, right, and bottom. So we have all different sizes. So we'll keep it pretty simple and just say horizontal and vertical. And we're going to say two and zero to start. So padding is a little different in the console than it is on something like the web, because the web we deal with pixels. But with the console, what we're dealing with is character spaces and line returns. So if you were to say, oh, I just want like a five and a five, that's going to make a huge panel. Um, so let's just see what a five and a five would look like. We could just say five if we wanted to, but let's just say five and five. That puts five everywhere around uh, on all four sides. So if we run this, it's huge. Why is that? Well, if we count um, one line, line return, two, three, four, five, that's your five. And then over here, we've got one, two, three, four, five. That's your five. So again, padding is not gonna work the exact same way as it does on HTML because it's not dealing with pixels. So just keep that in mind when you think about designing your panels and your, your padding around them. So let's start with just uh, two and zero. So we can also do things like color our borders and so on, but we'll leave it at this for now. So with this, let's just make sure we can see what it looks like. And cool, there's our rounded um, panel with a little bit of space. Okay, now let's add a header. So panel.header, and we can say um, my name. Sure, that works. And if we run this, we'll now see my name is inside the, or on the, the border, and that, did, identifies what the panel is. But again, we got a spacing issue because it's right up against Tim Corey. I don't love that. So let's change that to two, one. And by doing so, we're gonna add one line return there. And so now we have that one line return in between the my name and Tim Corey. So cool, we've got a panel, but what if you want to have us be like a list? Well, how would we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked because I have the answer for you. Let's bring in a list. I'll bring it from uh, previous examples. So we have our list of string names. We've done this before, it's in the previous lessons. So how do we get that into here? Well, here's how you do it. Um, you create a new string. So a string, let's call it out. Uh, let's call it um, panel info equals string dot join. 
and we're going to join based upon a new line and pass in names. What that will do is take this list of string, it will collapse it down into one string, and it will put the new line character between each one. If we do that, and we pass that in here instead of Tim Corey, and instead of my name, now I should say uh, default names, like so. And we run this, we'll get our list of default names with spacing around them, and they're all on their own line. So that's how you create a list. Now that does show you that you could do any type of formatting you wanted on here. So if you wanted to call one out, you could say red like so, and then we could um, close that off. And then if we run this again, there we go. We've called out Bill O'Baggins as, you know, an important name to know. So that's how we can utilize a list of string or something else, we have to join it into one string um, to to pass into our, our panel or an I renderable. Um, but we're not quite done yet because what if we wanted to make this these names centered? Well, we can't do it just by using a string. We have to use an I renderable. So to do that, let's cut this out temporarily and say new markup and then pass in our our um, string and we're not going to pass in a style but then we're going to say dot centered and that gives us our i renderable as opposed to just a string so it takes our string turns it into an i renderable um, that is the markup we've centered this string so now when we run this we can see that we have all of our strings centered. And again, this is kind of like the table. You can center your panel or you can center the content in the panel. And that's how you deal with panels. And again, panels are I renderable, which means we could put them into a table. We could put them into other spots where I renderables can go and kind of start nesting and building these things out. So that's panels. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.